Adventures, Adventure Bree here, and guess what? I made it! Just in time, too. You should have seen us running to make it through that waterfall. When there was about 15 seconds left, we dove into the waterfall and prayed that it would not close on us. Windfire was lucky enough to fly right on through it. He used his super speed to beat the clock. <laughs> Woo, that was a journey. Woo, can't see. I'm so thankful that those Doofendorfs heard Samira's call for me all those weeks ago. Without them, I may not have made it here in time. Oh, let's take this off. Actually, I wouldn't have made it. So thank you so much, Doofendorfs. God gave them gifts and they really have been using them. That island is blessed by God. Now that I'm back in Revival Land, a lot is happening. God called us behind the waterfall and into the wild. What a wild adventure it has been getting here. But I realized something. Do you want to know what it was? I've been following Jesus into the wild even before I made it here. When I was trapped in that jail, I was following Jesus. Chief Wise, I got your message and I was using my gift of evangelism to tell that village about all the things that God had done. Quick and snappy, I got your messages too. I was willing to stand up for Jesus no matter what. And it turns out you were too because you sent friends to help get me out. The last time that I was here, God used me to help bring revival back to Revival Land. And now that we're behind the waterfall and into the wild, I'm still following Jesus wherever he goes. The book of Acts is still our key. Anything that we need to know can be found on this map. Look, there's something that's trying to pop through now. It says, tell the world, and points that way. Tell the world what? What am I supposed to tell them? The last time I needed help, you know, when I was stuck in that jail, there was this scripture that helped me out. Hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it was it. Say it with me. As prisoners of the Lord, I urge you to live a life that's worthy of the calling that you received. Wait, there's more. It says, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Okay. Be completely humble. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Ephesians 4 verses 1 through 2. That's it! Windfire! Oh, where is he gone now? You'd think that after all this time together, he'd be right here by my side. Okay, okay, we have to call him. Do you guys remember how to do it? You have to say these words. Revival's in the air, catch it if you can. Okay, you ready? Revival's in the air, catch it if you can. Where are you? <gasps> there he is. God's given us a message. He wants us to tell the world something and he's pointing that way. Come on, we have to go. You know, I think that's where Samara is and she always helps us find our way along this journey. I'm so excited to see her. Okay, let's go guys. Hey there, adventurers. It's me, Miss Samara. Adventurer Bree, you made it. And boy, am I glad to see you. We've been waiting so long for you to get here. Welcome back to Revival Land. Those Doofendorfs were sure helpful on this journey. I didn't know they heard my call to you until Chief Wise told me he'd sent people to find you. Now that you're here, the real fun can begin. And we're so happy to have you. I witnessed your journey here, and wow, it was a wild one. But the special thing about you is that you're always willing to follow Jesus wherever he goes. So cool. You too, adventurers. I can see you brought your map with you. Good thing you did, because the book of Acts is our key. We're back in the book of Acts, and last week we had a story that was pretty similar to yours. Last week we read about Stephen. He stood up for Jesus no matter what, and his life left a mark. Things started stirring in that town after Stephen died. And as much as I want to tell you what happened next, I'm going to let the Bible speak for itself. It sounds so much better coming from there. So go ahead, grab your Bible. I know you brought it with you because you always come prepared. And we're going to be reading from the book of Acts, chapter 8, and we're going to start in verse 1. Come on, read it with me. Here we go. And Saul approved of them killing him. That was Stephen. On that day, the church in Jerusalem began to be attacked and treated badly. All except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly Jews buried Stephen. They mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. 
He went from house to house. He dragged away men and women and put them in prison. The believers who had been scattered preached the word everywhere they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria. There he preached about the Messiah. That's Jesus. The crowds listened to Philip and saw the signs he did. All of them paid close attention to what he said. Evil spirits screamed and came out of many people. Many people who were disabled or who couldn't walk were healed. So there was great joy in that city. Come on, talk to God with me. God, help us to hear your word today and help us to tell the world about your word and about Jesus. Amen. That was a lot to take in, I know. So let's break it down a little. So we heard about a guy named Saul here, the one we just read about. He was a pretty bad man. He was supposed to be good. He was actually a religious teacher, but here he's literally helping kill Stephen because Stephen followed Jesus and was telling other people about Jesus. He was rough. He was going from house to house, hurting people. And the Bible says that he was dragging them away, like literally dragging them. <laughs> Does not sound like a nice guy, not at all. He wanted to destroy anyone that followed Jesus. He wanted to stop it. But we know that when God wants to move, nothing can stop it. Saul was persecuting followers of Jesus and so many people started to scatter. They had to run away and go to other places so that they could be safe. But here's the interesting thing. When they started scattering and going to other places, everywhere they went, they told other people about Jesus. They started spreading the gospel literally everywhere. It was spreading like crazy. Saul was trying to stop it by hurting people but he didn't stop it. Because when God wants to move, nothing can stop it. Not even angry mean Saul. The gospel, that's the good news of Jesus, was getting spread everywhere. And the last thing that Jesus told his disciples to do was to go, say go. He said to go and make disciples of all nations. He didn't tell them to just stay where they were. He actually told them to go. They needed to go to other people and to other places to make more disciples. They had been doing it where they were, and that was good. But now when persecution came, it actually kind of forced them to have to go to other places to keep spreading the good news of Jesus. It was good that they started where they were, but it was also really good that they were able to go and take the good news to other places too. The world needs the gospel. The world needs Jesus. Back then, people in other cities didn't know about Jesus yet. Someone needed to tell them. These followers were able to go and they were able to tell them the gospel was spreading. Right now, there are also people in the world and people in our own cities who don't know Jesus yet and who don't follow Jesus yet. Someone needs to tell them. One thing that I really want you to remember from today is this, the world needs Jesus. I really want you to know that and I want us to remember this. Can you say it with me? The world needs Jesus. All right, come on, one more time. The world needs Jesus. It was true back then and it's still true now. The world needs Jesus and someone needs to tell the world about Jesus. The believers who had been scattered, they preached the word everywhere they went. I wanna be like that. Then Philip, one of the followers of Jesus, he had so much boldness that he went to a specific place in Samaria, that was a city, and he started preaching about Jesus to everyone. People were getting healed and set free. God was moving and God brought joy to that city. Philip told the world, he told that city. Back then, the gospel began to spread. And today, we need the gospel to spread. We need people to stand up for Jesus, just like Stephen and like Philip. We need people who will tell the world about Jesus. We need people who are willing to go to other places one day. But right now, it starts with where you are. You can tell people about Jesus right now. In your neighborhoods, you can tell people about Jesus. With your families, at the grocery store, at camp, on vacation, literally anywhere, you can tell people about Jesus. You can tell people right now the good news about Jesus. I want you to tell the world. Now, part of this is also important because you need to know the Bible. Right now, one of the ways you can get ready is by knowing the Bible. Start to memorize verses in the Bible. Read the Bible more. Read the Gospels. You can read different stories of Jesus and learn more about Him and learn more about what His Word says so that you can tell other people about God's Word, just like Stephen did and just like Philip did. That's really important if we're gonna tell the world. Say yes to Jesus today. Say yes to telling the world about Him because the world needs Jesus. 
And Jesus is worth it no matter what. So go tell the world about him. Jesus came to the world to tell us good news. Good news that God the Father loves us, like really, really loves us, and that he wants to be with us forever. Good news that we can live free and alive on the inside. Jesus came and he brought the good news. He came and he was and is the good news. His life is good news to us forever because of Jesus and because of his life, because of his death and because of his resurrection, that was him coming back to life. Because of everything Jesus did, we can be alive forever. When you know good news, you can't help but tell people. Jesus loved sharing the good news of the kingdom of God with everyone. He couldn't keep it to himself. He had to tell us. When you know good news, you just can't help but want to tell other people. And we know good news. We know Jesus. But the world still needs Jesus, and someone has to tell them. We can do it, though. So come on, let's be like Jesus. Don't keep it to yourself. Go and tell the world. Wow, there's so much to do. If our map is pointing in that direction, we better follow it. Samara, what you said is so true. The world needs Jesus. This world needs Jesus. So I'm gonna tell the world. God brought me back behind the waterfall for a reason. This land is alive, but it still needs Jesus. So I'm gonna follow him wherever he goes because following Jesus is wild.